Now, I'm going to throw a little sidebar at you. I'm going to cover every argument. Here's the hypocrisy of people like this, Lisa. They'll say, well, you know, a woman can't preach. But then they say preaching and prophesying is the same thing. But then it says sons and daughters shall prophesy. You can't have it both ways. If preaching and prophesying are the same thing, you say a woman can't preach, that means she can't prophesy either. But the Bible said a woman prophesied. So we know that preaching and prophesying just on that argument ain't the same thing. Hallelujah. We got to be, see, you cannot build the word strictly on your experience or even the experience of your founder or pioneers. It's on the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's keep reading. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. No one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. What is the opening statement? Desire spiritual things. However, in the spirit. So the whole context is dealing with spiritual matters, particularly tongues and prophesying. Why would God, through Paul, spend a whole chapter, chapter 14, actually chapter 12, 13 is love, and then pick up back on in 14 if it's not for today. (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's keep going for time's sake. Let's go down to verse 30. I want want to show you something for time. I think it's verse 30. Are y'all getting this? Let's start in verse 26. Prophets prophesying, all related. And we'll talk about the difference. Just because you prophesy doesn't mean you're a prophet. Matter of fact, I'm of a believer of the church, in the church of a believer. If you got the Holy Ghost, you have the all believers have the potential to prophesy on some level. You might not prophesy like a prophet prophesies, right? Because the difference between a prophet prophesying is that God gives him revelation. He'll see things, right? Like God gives me names and all that kind of stuff. That's not necessarily prophecy. That's revelation within the prophecy. That's other gifts working with prophecy. That's a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge, which are revelation gifts with working with prophecy. Now, why is this important? Because, first of all, we're supposed to stand for truth. And it's in the truth God sets us free. And I believe God's going to activate some folks today. I believe there's some people in this place that God, amen, going to move on you and take you to another level in your walk and your gifting with God. Now, remember today we're only focusing on the prophet. That doesn't mean that the evangelist, let me say this really quick. You could be an evangelist as your primary calling and still be prophetic. You could be a pastor in your primary calling and still be prophetic. You're just not as prophetic as the prophet would be. Just like the prophet, when it comes to the evangelist, shouldn't be just as effective of saving souls as the evangelist is. They all can save souls, but the evangelist is geared and gifted to do it. Oh, my God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse, what I tell you, verse 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you have a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speak in a tongue, let it be two or three at the most. Each in turn, let one interpret. So what is he talking about? Order. Why would he give order to something that no longer exists? That's the point I'm making. Why would you spend order to something that no longer exists? Amen. Then it says, But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Verse 29. We are talking about in the church, right? I thought the prophets, it ended in the Old Testament. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. In other words, he's he's giving a little bit of order of how the prophetic should operate in services. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, again, we see that the prophet ministry, the modern-day prophet ministry, it works within the church. 
The difference between the Old Testament prophet and New Testament prophet is simply this. We are under the age of grace. We are under dispensation of the Spirit of God. We don't have the inherent word. The inherent word is the Bible. Amen. That's why the Bible says test and prove all things. Amen. That's why everybody prophesying to you don't mean it's always right. That's why the Bible says test everything. Judge everything. Try the spirits. That doesn't mean be so critical that you can't receive anything either. It's just saying even in this realm of working and gifting, there's still an order and accountability. But it does never imply that it's not for today, nor does it not exist. I don't understand where they're making this up. I've been to three Bible colleges, and I still can't figure out how they're making this up. That it's not for today. When you, we're reading all New Testament, I have not even turned to one Old Testament scripture about the ministry of the prophet. Y'all quiet. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we see that there's prophecy versus preaching. Now, preaching can have a prophetic element to it, right? You can preach prophetically, but prophesying and preaching are not exactly the same thing. They are different. Prophesying is one of the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Prophesying does not come by study. It doesn't come by anything. It's a gift that God gives. You can have broken English and still out prophesy everybody. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with cognitive skills. It has everything to do with a spiritual endowment and a gift. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the purpose of prophecy in its most simplest form in the church is for edification, comfort, and exhortation. It's a, it's a right now word given by the Lord, inspired and moved by the Spirit of God. But there's levels to this. There's different areas. There's different functions. Uh, there's different levels in the prophetic. Amen? But nowhere does the Bible ever deny the existence of the ministry of the prophet. Thank God for the ministry of the prophet. We can see that God used Agabus as an example, him and the other prophets, to warn the church about coming trouble. Amen. Many times in my dreams, God has shown me things about things to come. I mean, y'all remember doing COVID. I kept giving y'all updates on my dreams. And I said, don't worry about what everyone else is saying. I can't speak for them. But I'm telling you what the Lord is showing me in my dreams. I told you in the beginning that COVID at the time would last three years. Officially, amen. And after three years, they announced it was no longer, amen, a pandemic. It's still here, but it's not a pandemic. Three years almost to the day. Hallelujah. What is that? That's not psychic. That's part of the prophetic in regards to the church. Psychics don't function in the church. At least they better not. Hallelujah. The prophetic operates in the church, and it's not always predicting. Hallelujah. But it's the work of the Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the move of God. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. Come on, there's nobody like him. Bless your father. Bless your father. Hey, hallelujah, Baba. Bless you, Jesus. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you, Father. There's nobody like you, Jesus. I mean, people have been so um, inundated with this that they can't even listen to the idea of it being possible. But yet, there's millions, I read something in the article, that's nearly in, on earth over a bill, or nearly a billion people that subscribe to speaking in unknown tongues. In all the third world countries, it's the fastest growing brand, I don't like to use that term, but brand of Christianity in the world. In Africa, Central America, South America, it's like wildfire how God is moving by the Spirit. I said this last week. Almost every worship artist that you like are tongue-talking people, spirit-filled people that believe, almost all of them, almost every single one of them. A lot of people never thought of them. Almost every single song you can think of was birthed out of, that, out of that area of creativity, of inspiration by the Holy Ghost. Are they perfect? No, but neither are you. God chooses to work in the framework of humanity. I don't know why he does it, but God has chosen to do it that way. Hallelujah. And anytime people involved, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be wrong sometime. But that doesn't mean God is not in it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There's mistakes in your life, but thank God God is still in your life. 
He doesn't leave you because of every mistake. He doesn't dismiss you because you missed it. Thank God for the grace of God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's give him praise today. Come on, let's go into some worship, ladies and gentlemen.